Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from North Flight Images. Um, in this short video, I'm going to look at a new release of some software which has is likely to become a fairly standard element of my workflow for a lot of my commercial photography. It's DxO Pure RAW. Now this is version four of it. Um, it's it's worked. It's been around for a, you know for a few years now. And my own involvement with using DxO software goes back to the original version of DxO Optics Pro, which I reviewed over twenty years ago. Now for that particular version, by the way, and I'll put some links if you want to see some of the old reviews of things, um, some of my very first written reviews. Uh, that didn't even handle raw files. It was only for processing JPEGs. Uh, it quickly moved raw files. And DxO Optics Pro and Photolab became a tool that I would use occasionally. Uh, it didn't necessarily fit with my workflow, but occasionally when I had images that really needed it, often noisy high ISO images, or ones where I wanted the detail and I liked the way that DxO processed RAW files, I used that. So I've used it occasionally over the years. Pure RAW, however, um, and this is it, I'm running this on a uh, Mac Studio here. Uh, Pure RAW, and this is the interface for it if you want to go through and do fine adjustments, has added, version four has added a new noise processing. Now these are all sort of based on AI models and all sorts of things. What I'm using for, I'm not gonna go to any of the fancy tricks you can do with it about renaming files and things like that, is that you can bulk process your raw files after you've ingested them from a card and produce DNG files. Now you can do other formats as well, I'm not really interested in that. Those DNG files can then be opened in my normal workflow where I'd use something like Adobe Camera Raw. Why does this make a difference? Well, one of the biggest problems I've had with using DxO Optics Pro Photolab a lot is that they only support the lenses they support. Now, if they support the lenses you've got, you can add those corrections. It can do, you've got the choice of turning them off. So you can do lens correction, softness correction. You can use vignetting correction, all the bits and pieces for lenses that are supported. However, I used it here and I'll just show some examples in this of some images that I've processed. Um, I used it here when I was testing the Lauer 10 millimeter manual focus lens on the EOS RP. That's the one I'm shooting this on. I did a whole lot of shots at 1600, 2000, 3200 ISO. Normally they are very noisy. If I process them in a camera raw, I can drop the noise a bit, but if they're nighttime shots, and this is uh, this particular one here is a, you know, no uh, changes of exposure or anything. This is just the basic raw file. You can see I've tried to capture the highlights here, hold the highlights, but I want to bring up all the details, all the shadow detail. If I try doing that in camera raw, I get noise. If I use Adobe's latest version of uh, um, denoising, it will go away, do a bit of processing, it will come back. Yes, it's improved, but it's nowhere near as good as the latest version from DxO. And I'll switch here to a, to a different version of it. So I've got, this is a very, dark bit of this image here. Uh, this is after it's been processed. This is the um, the result coming out and this is enlarged a lot. Uh, this is a result coming out of DxO with the uh, their optimal method. It took about 20 odd seconds per image uh, for uh, on this Mac Studio here. You do need a fairly fast machine. If I try running this on my old Mac Pro it will run on it using the graphics card but it will take several minutes. So this is one of those things where the kit makes a difference. That's that. If I look at the noise in the original, it's a lot more. If I look at the noise, even in the say, Adobe processed one, it's still there. It's not as good as this. Now these images, I used this when I did the review of this particular lens. Why is it important? Why, why, um, uh, you know, why have they finally produced a bit of software that I'm going to go, yes, I want to use it all the time. It's because I use adapted tilt shift lenses. Works a treat on images for my GFX 100S. 
I can put images from my old Canon 1DS, 1DS Mark III, my 5DS, anything I've got, I can run the raw files through this. Obviously, if there's a known lens, it'll apply corrections, but I use tilt-shift lenses a lot, and DxO have never, as far as I know, uh, have never been able to support shift lenses, or definitely not tilted lenses. This will work with anything. I could use an old bottle end as a lens and still get the benefits of using this. This means my adapted lenses. So when I get assorted manual lenses to test from, you know, from the likes of Lauer or Astrohori or ones I've looked at, I can run all those through. I, it, this is not tied to knowing what lens there is and what the settings are. This means I can use all my shift lenses, I can process any image that I've got within reason. I don't think I haven't found one yet that it won't handle, but there must be stuff. But I've had a relatively limited range of, uh, uh, range of cameras. So there you have it. Um, I'll put a link through to the notes about this. I put a download link. Um, please do use the free trial download link. Um, I believe DxO would like it if I, if I use this particular link. Um, it's just for the download, get a free download for it and then try it out. What I would say is find some of your old noisy files, run them through this and see what you think. Now, software like this is going to be changing all the while. So this is what I'm going to be using this year. I suspect from having used DxO stuff, this will quickly become a fairly standard part of my workflow if I'm using things, unusual lenses. Um, this finally lets me use a lot of the DxO processing on any old lens I've got. So this video is shot on the EOS RP and I've got an Olympus 24mm f2.8 lens that I use on it, manual focus, manual lens. I can use that, I can process the images. Now, if you've got well exposed images, if you've got images at base ISO, your benefits may be not that much. But if you shoot a lot of high ISO stuff, if you, like me, like using handheld, so you tend to push the ISO up, uh, give it a go and see what you think. Anyway, there you go. Um, quite a nifty bit of software. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. And, um, well, I'll show some more examples of some images I've took with this. Um, so just run through a few images here. Uh, it really is quite impressive. Uh, it's not often I get a piece of software that goes, Whoo, use this. So we've now got this. Topaz Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI. Little bits of software that make a difference and make use of the processing power of this. Stuff like this will only get better. So there you go. Thanks for watching.